If you have found this video, you should count yourself extremely lucky because I am about to reveal to you a number of infinitely valuable strategies for your physics CAI exam. Please listen until the end because every word in this video is going to get you closer to 100%. My name is Naproud, and to introduce myself, in the beginning in high school, I always struggled with learning every single physics topic, but by the end, I ended up getting the highest score in my country for year 12 and year 13, so for two years consecutively. I also went on to the University of Cambridge to study natural sciences and graduated with a first class honors. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything that I learned about how to do well in physics exams in high school. Before we get started talking about physics, I want to introduce to you a concept called the Turing test. Please bear with me. The Turing test is a concept from artificial intelligence created by Alan Turing in 1949. It involves a man who goes into a room with a wall and asks a set of questions to two things that he cannot see behind the wall. One of them is a computer and the other one is a human. Both of these things must answer the questions, and the computer has said to have passed the Turing test if the man cannot distinguish which is a human and which is a computer. Now compare you taking the physics exam to the human answering the questions. The physics exam is the Turing test, and the man is the examiner. Now what is my point? There is no test that is actually perfect. The physics exam cannot really test whether or not you are good at physics. Even if you are really good at physics, you can seem bad at physics if you do not give answers that they can give marks for. On the other hand, even if you are bad at physics, you can be completely indistinguishable from a person who is good at physics, according to the exam. Each exam has its own set of rules, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to play by the rules so that you can get a high score. Now I'm going to warn you before we get into it, you have to be aware that this is not a sheet method and this is not a hack. You will not get results if you do not put in the work. So please listen until the end of this video and when you have closed it, carry out all the steps that I advise you to. And so here are seven steps to get 100% in your physics exam, starting with step one. One, study your syllabus. Every exam has a syllabus associated with it, and what you should always be aware of is that they will never ask you any questions outside of this content in the syllabus. Go and look at the syllabus and look over what topics are in it and how the syllabus is structured. This is important for two reasons. First of all, the exam usually gives questions in the order that the, they appear in, in the syllabus. This is true for multiple choice and papers two and four. When you get a question in the exam, note what topic it comes from, and from there, you can also guess what the subtopics that come after it are, and so what the later parts of the question are going to be. This will give you more confidence in knowing what information you need to use in order to answer the question that comes up. Secondly, you know that all of the answers are going to come from somewhere in this limited pool of knowledge. So if you are stuck, you can think through all of the topics that come up and know for sure that the answer is and has to come from this information. It's a limited toolbox that you have. So when you have learned everything, you can be confident that you do have everything that you need to know in order to do every question. However, this is not to say that you should not study outside of the, your syllabus. You should always try to do that in order to gain more depth and understanding. Step two, study your textbook. As I said in a previous video, you should aim to read every single page in your textbook from front to back and every single word if possible. This is really important for a few different reasons. First of all, a lot of details and situations which come up in the exam papers will be exactly as in the textbook. Secondly, it will help you to absorb the correct phrases and keywords which you need to use in order to answer questions. Thirdly, this will form a better understanding which it has more body. Compare an understanding gained from doing only past paper questions and learning the answers to a skeleton, and an understanding gained from reading the textbook to be a full human body. Finally, and very importantly, some of the questions that will come up in your exam will not have come up in past papers before because they are additions to the syllabus or they have just never asked a question about it before. The only way you can be sure that you have learned everything is by using the textbook. Three, study the exam structure. 
Aside from using the past papers as a way to get practice questions, you should study and analyze the format and structure of the exam papers. There are five exam papers in total and all of these have different formats, different number of marks, amount of time allocated, and weighting. You should become familiar with all of these and create a unique strategy to tackle each one. From this, you can get a value for the maximum amount of time you should allocate to a question depending on its number of marks. An approximate measure I always use is you should spend about 60% of the allocated time for your exam to do the question paper fully once, from beginning to end. Then, the remaining 40%, you should spend checking over your answers or even go over the question paper once again fully in your head and do it another time. Another thing that you can notice is the command words that they use, especially in papers 2 and 4, where they will often start off questions with the same words such as define, state that, show that, calculate, and so on. By noting what the command word used is, you can be able to guess more and feel more confidence that the approach that you are using to answer the question is correct and you are doing what they asked you to. 4. Study the mark schemes. The mark scheme is your best friend. Every time you do a question, you should go to the mark scheme and correct the answer like an examiner, honestly marking it exactly like an examiner would. You should also notice what types of marks there are. There are four different types of marks, C1, B1, M1, and A1. You should take note of what kind of mark it is in the mark scheme because you will not always get marks just for writing something if you do not write something before it, for example. Memorize the common key phrases that come up in the mark scheme and you can always use these in your answers in exam papers. However, you should not just paste exactly what they said in the mark scheme in your answer. What's best is knowing why they wrote that in the mark scheme, why they want you to focus on that particular thing, and then forming a continuous answer in full sentences that is unique to you that you can use to answer the questions when they come up in the exam. 5. Memorize all the definitions. Many of the questions in paper 2 and paper 4 will start off with a define or state question. In the May-June examination series, these define and state that questions made up 18 out of 160 of the marks in papers 2 and paper 4, which corresponds to 11.25%. So that's 11.25% you could gain from simply stating things from memory. This might not sound like a lot, but remember, 100 minus 11.25% gives you 88.75%, which takes you out of the question of getting over 90%. Sometimes students will be concerned about whether these definitions are going to change over time and they will be concerned about whether they should be doing newer papers rather than older papers. This is not something that you have to worry about much in physics because the concepts are lasting over a long time and they don't really change. These definitions are extremely important and it's important to write them exactly with the right wording because just adjusting a few words is going to change the meaning of the concept. Every word is there for a reason. Because of this, in my year 12 CAIE physics course, I have included a definitions list which has all the definitions exactly as written in the mark scheme for you. If you tried to do this yourself, you would have to go through many years, perhaps decades of past papers in order to collect all the definitions and write them down. So let me know if you are interested in purchasing the course. 6. Memorize the common proofs and descriptions. Similarly to the definitions, there are some common proofs that come up which you can also write from memory. This is especially common in year 13 where there are proofs for example for Hall voltage or proofs for the velocity of an object moving in orbit around a planet. These can also be memorized and written down exactly as you have memorized them in the exam. It's actually probably best for you to do this in order for you not to have to worry about it too much and think about some other things instead. There are also common long answer questions which ask you to describe something, such as describing the principles of CT scanning. With these questions, you can also look in the mark scheme and see what the marking points are in order to be able to get all of these and collect all the marks. 7. Take care with your layout. The closer your answer is to the mark scheme answer, the easier it is for the examiner to give you marks. However, as I said before, this is not to say that you should simply memorize the mark scheme and write it exactly in as it is in the mark scheme. 
First of all, because the mark scheme doesn't even write its answer in full sentences. You should write your answer in full sentences, but you should make sure that you have included all of the phrases in the mark scheme. Another important thing is making sure your handwriting is legible and clear. This is not the time to be saying that the examiner should be making an effort to understand your handwriting. You should also be sure that your explanations are easy to understand and your working out is comprehensive and it's laid out neatly. This is all to make it easiest for them to give you marks. And that concludes the seven steps to getting 100% in the physics CAIE exam. But before we end, please listen a little bit more. Even though in this video I have focused a lot on memorizing things from the mark scheme and also on the syllabus, please make sure that you understand everything that you are writing and why each word is there, why each phrase is there, why each number is there, and know when you are writing your answers why and have that reasoning in your head. Please make sure that you also have understanding because without it, you will be just like the computer in the Turing test, sometimes giving a perfect answer, but at other times when encountering a question outside of its programming, hopelessly wrong, insensitive, and dumb. I also have a year 12 CAIE physics course where there are teaching videos by me which are perfectly adherent to the syllabus while including enough depth for you to be able to understand the concepts a past paper questions by topic which will allow you to pick up on the patterns and common questions that come up across the years, and a definitions list so that you can write the definitions exactly in the right wording as you have to in order to get the marks. If you are interested, DM us at neproud underscore academy and I really recommend this course. Finally, please give this video a like if it was helpful, comment below any questions or suggestions or video requests that you might have for the future, and please subscribe for more videos on physics, maths, and high school revision and study tips. Thank you so much for watching guys, and good luck with your revision. See you!